bow in a word of prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you this afternoon with thanksgiving. Thank you so much for gathering us in this space. And thank you so much for the culture of Uganda Christian University that you give us time in the middle of the week to stop, sit at your feet, and receive from you. Lord, as we come this afternoon, we know that you know what we are going through. And so I pray that you'll quieten every noise in our hearts, in our lives, so that we'll be able to hear what you're saying to us this afternoon. I also pray that as we spend time together, you will meet every need represented here. Your scripture says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are our pleasures forevermore. So cause us to draw from those blessings as we sit in your presence. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's so, so wonderful to be back together again. Many of us have been scattered and you don't know what I went through when you are not here. What preachers went through when you are not here. If you will turn there, you will see a camera and uh, we welcome the online audience. But for many months, we would stand and preach to that machine. And sometimes we sweat, but you are preaching to that machine, hoping that God will give you data for you to be able to log in and receive the message we have prepared. So to have people on campus again is something to be celebrated. Let me invite you to give God a one minute long hand clap. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. We thank you, we honor you, we glorify you because you have brought us this far. Glory, praise, adoration to your name. Praise the Lord. You have had a sister, Rachel, inform us of the mission week. One thing I want to add is that we shall be coming to your rooms, in your halls of residence, and in your hostels. We shall be wearing tags, so you'll be able to identify us. Please don't pour hot water on us. We shall just be bringing God's word to you. Prepare to receive us. If you're in the room, you see us, please give us some time to share God's love with you. Hallelujah. Now let me invite you to turn your Bibles to the passage read for us. Joshua chapter 5, and the emphasis is going to be on verse number 12. Joshua chapter 5, focusing on verse number 12. It reads, and the manna ceased the day after they ate of the produce of the land. And there was no longer manna for the people of Israel, but they ate of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. I pray that God will give you the ability to imagine what is going on here. Because for 40 years, these people have eaten manna or survived on manna from heaven. They had this sense of assurance of the next meal. And it was not hard work to get the next meal. All you needed to do was to go out there and gather as much as the family needed. And uh, when we read this particular part of the Bible, we learn that if you stored more than what you needed, this food would turn into maggots. But miraculously, for the Sabbath day, the night before the Sabbath day, you'd collect food for two days, and that food would not rot. So here is a group of people who all they know to survive on is this food from heaven. 
and they come to God's promised land, and when they eat of the fruit of the land, the crops on the garden, we read that the manna stopped. It would seem as if they are going to miss a lot. It would seem as if the provider has stopped providing. It would seem as if life is going to become harder and harder. But there is a shifting in how God, their provider, is going to provide for them. There is a shifting in how God, their provider, is going to provide for them. From now onwards, they will have to work with their hands. They will have to till the ground. They will have to sow seed in the time of sowing. They will have to watch out for the rains so that they can sow when the rains come. But also from now on, there will be variety at the dinner table. If I can project Uganda into Israel, there will be some cassava, some sweet potatoes, some beans, some peas, variety, some, some gobe. <laughs> and all these variety of foods we have, now they can have on their dinner table. Because what you grow in the garden, of course, which, um, which can be grown in that land, is what you harvest for food. But also they have to rely on God for rain. That when they sow their seed in the field, God would water their gardens and their crop will grow and produce fruit. As we think about this pandemic and what has happened over the last couple of months, God invites us to a pandemic shift. A pandemic shift. A pandemic shift. You've heard about paradigm shift, but the language I want us to think about is pandemic shift. In the sense that there are many things which have changed since March 2020, and we're not going to go back to those times again. Those of you who are here, how many of you remember mobile phone scratch cards? Can I see your hand? Okay. The number of people who use those scratch cards. I've used the MTN for a long time, so we would buy those yellow cards, and they would have a layer on top, and then you scratch, you die your word. Was star 130 star, then you enter the number, then you dial hash, then like that you have credit on your phone to call. You remember those scratch cards? How many of you bought some this morning? <laughs> there was a time a policy came up in government and they said no more scratch cards. So for you to be able to use your phones and to get credit on your phone, you actually need mobile money on your phone. If you don't have mobile money on your phone, then you go to some agent to load for you air time. The age of scratch cards is gone. We are not likely to go back to that place again. I was watching this WhatsApp video of a young, of a family, and then the father brought for them these, I don't know what to call them, these phones, these desk phones, the ones we used to do like this. And the young girl in the room asked the dad, what is that? And the dad said, that's a telephone. You know what the young girl did? The young girl came to this gadget and started pressing, as if you're pressing a smartphone. And asked, where do I find my WhatsApp? Of course, times had changed, and this gadget is now outdated. For urban-dwelling mothers, these days, we, they use diapers. For many years, we used nappies. And you had to wash them. You had to soak them in jig. You had to dry them. You had to keep many so that some are dry when you are washing others. Today, people spend money on diapers. For many people, the time and age of diapers, I mean of nappies, is gone pandemic shift. 
There are some good lessons we have learned over these past couple of months, which I invite you to embrace going forward. Because that is the way to live and enjoy life going forward. And I invite you to think about six, six areas talking about a pandemic shift. Number one, we have learned how to be conscious of disease, conscious of protecting ourselves of disease, contagious disease. And one of the things we are using these days are the soaps, <clears throat> washing your hands, putting on your mask, social distancing. And what I have experienced personally is that over the last one year or so, I have not had the common codes as frequently as I used to have them, 2019. I have not had these common codes. And I can only give one explanation that because I wash my hands, because when I'm speaking to someone, my nose is covered and my mouth is covered, probably the level at which I, re I receive this infection from the common flu or common colds has decreased by far. So one of the things as we go into the future is this awareness that you need to be a steward of your health. You need to be a steward of your health. That nobody is going to do it for you. But if you be diligent and be a steward of your health, there are many things which can be avoided. We have learned the importance of having a balanced diet. That certain minerals are important in your body. Certain vitamins are important in your body. And so when you see people buying lemon, oranges, it's not because they have money to spare, but because they have learned it's important to have a balanced diet. We have learned that it's important to make time for physical exercises, that it helps to be fit, that when our bodies are attacked by any foreign element or, or virus, we are better off fighting against that virus if we are fit we have learned the importance of having friends you can rely on when the going gets lonely. Because without friends and these relationships, we see a lot of mental breakdowns. So the whole area of the stewardship of health is something to keep going forward. There might come a day when we don't have to wear these masks as often as we do. There might come that day. But this sense of being aware that I am a steward of my health is going to be very, very important. And so I invite you to take advantage of opportunities for vaccination at your CEO. I invite you to adopt new lifestyles in terms of friendships and discussion groups, in terms of social distancing and masking, because stewardship of health is something we must carry forward. And as a university community, God has given us a mandate to educate the other Ugandans, to educate our relatives, to educate our youngsters. Some of us have brothers and sisters in primary school. Some of us have relatives who have not been to school at all. And what you learn in the area of stewardship of your health, you can pass it on to other people. The second area is the stewardship of resources. The stewardship of resources. And how we use what God has given us. After March 2020, many people lost their jobs. Many people lost their source of income. We had many PhDs in this country who had no work. We had many breadwinners in the family who had no income. And so we learned over that time that the little you have, you use it well. The little you have, you use it well. And many of us have learned to manage on less, something which we must take forward, something which we must carry forward going into the future, the stewardship 
of resources. One other big thing we have learned with regard to resources is the idea of saving. Many of us in Uganda didn't have a saving culture. So when your salary stops coming, you wonder, what am I going to do tomorrow? Because there is no bag to draw from. There are no reserves to draw from. There is no fallback position for any of us. But this pandemic has taught us the discipline of saving and the discipline of being frugal with our resources. And it's things we are going to have to carry forward. Those of us who worship with us at Tony Croft Chapel every Sunday, you might have heard us invite people to join TOSA. TOSA is our circle. It was opened in June 2020. It was opened in the time when many people didn't have income, when many people's family economics was struggling. As we speak today, our saving is more than 50 million shillings. As we speak today, and our membership is only about 80 people. Our saving is only 10,000 per month. And you buy two shares to join, which share is 20,000 shillings only. But you can see from that that we are growing as a community in the discipline of saving. We are growing as a church community in the discipline of saving. And there are things God is teaching us in the pandemic with regard to the management of our resources which God wants us to carry forward. That when I get 100,000 shillings, I don't have to go to Serena to celebrate. I could have a, a simple meal and save 10,000 and keep 10,000 for another rainy day. The stewardship of resources is the second thing we need to carry forward. The third area is holistic approach to gifts and talents God has given each of us. Having a holistic approach to gifts and talents which God has given us. You see, friends, God in his wisdom gives us a multiplicity of gifts. So when, as a school teacher, the classroom is closed, you can do some baking. You can do some gardening. The whole idea of relying on one gift, relying on one skill, we are learning it cannot work. It cannot help us going into the future. And what God is inviting each one of us to do is to appreciate your gift set and to discover those gifts God has given you. Because when he gave them to you, he knew what he was doing. God does not create by guesswork. God does not endow gifts by probability. If he is the all-knowing God, and if he sees tomorrow from today, he knows the end from the beginning, then when he gave you those gifts, he knew what he was doing. But sometimes our education system elevates one gift, and we forget about the other. But God gave you resources to live by, resources to help you cope in various seasons of life, resources to help you cope in various seasons of life, and we need to pick on these gifts and use them together. So think about your own gift set. What is there? Is it only speaking good English? Is it only singing rap music? What is in there? There could be some gifts you thought or relegated to others, but God is saying pick them up, polish them up, and use them. Every talent, every gift God gave you, he did it intentionally. I know a friend, she joined Makerere, I think maybe two years or three years, uh, behind me in the Faculty of Technology, now called the School of Engineering. She did civil engineering. She has a PhD in civil engineering. 
but today her occupation is in the catering business. That's what she lives on, in the catering business. And she enjoys what she does. She didn't go to school for catering. She says, I learned from my mother. My mother taught me how to cook, and my mother taught me how to cook nice food. I can use this gift. As we speak today, she has opened three restaurants in her name. What are those gifts God has given you? How can you use them going forward? How can you change your mindset of elevating some gifts over others? The message I want to communicate in this point is God knew what he was doing when he gave you that gift. The fourth area I want to invite us to reflect on is what I've called family synergy. Family synergy. Family synergy here, I'm thinking about us living together as a family, and I want to hope and pray that each of us comes from a family. I know there are some people who have lost their families or who are detached from their families, but the scripture says God sets the lonely in families, meaning families are important. So I'm talking about family synergy. And the idea here, friends, I want us to reflect on is the importance of working together as a family. Before the pandemic, we had this idea of Bishop Joel is the breadwinner. Sister Dorothy is the breadwinner for the, this and the other family. But the pandemic has taught us that relying on one person for the survival and sustenance of the family might not be a wise thing to do. Because once that person loses their work, loses their job, the whole family is doomed. The whole family may suffer. How different would it be if we looked at family sustenance together? Are you four people in a family? Are you six people in a family? And everybody is making a contribution to the well-being of the family. And I'm glad that I'm speaking to ad young adults. Most of us are young adults. And God is inviting you as a young adult, whatever your parents or guardian are able to do. Can you make a contribution? Can you please make a contribution? Because as we tap in, into the corporate or collect, collected gift of the family, it becomes easier and easier to survive. You remember that verse in Ephesians chapter 4. It's verse 16. It talks about us being one body and each part of the body doing its role or playing its role. And that's the idea we are learning from the pandemic, that we need to work together as a family, to work together as a team, each of us to make a contribution instead of looking at one sole breadwinner. If they are out of job, out of work, out of business, the whole family is doomed. But if we tap into family synergy and bring all these gifts, all this knowledge, all this experience together, there will be a difference in terms of family continuity. Area number five, I invite us to reflect on is the area of intellectual growth, which is not teacher-centered. Intellectual growth, which is not teacher-centered. The pandemic has taught us that a time can come and the classroom is locked up. So if your intellectual development and learning is limited to you being in the classroom, you are going to stop right there and even forget the little you had learned. But in this age and going forward, we are being stirred and inspired to continue to grow even when the university is closed, to continue to grow even when you no longer have access to your teacher, to continue to develop and grow even when the person who will teach you this subject or the other course is no longer accessible. Intellectual growth, which is not teacher 
centered is the other paradigm this shift is calling us to. Embracing online instruction and online coaching. That there are resources out there which could improve you if you are willing to learn. And so going forward, the idea of being self-driven is going to be a non-negotiable. It's only those who are willing to move ahead, to be self-driven, who are likely to survive in the times today and in the times to come. Dependence on a physical interaction with the teacher, with the professor, with the lecturer, is going to become less and less. And so we need to shift a concept of learning. We need to shift a concept of intellectual growth. We need to shift a concept of skills development. That's what the pandemic is teaching us. We thank God for the blessing God has given us at UCU. That we have been able to move forward in terms of instruction for every course. At our graduation recently, we were told that the graduating class probably had done two years or three semesters online. And they had been able to move forward to the point of graduation. Think about people they joined the university with in other universities. Think about it. To be in semester one of first year for two years. Think about how difficult that must be. But the pandemic invites us to rethink intellectual growth and education, to be self-driven and to tap into every available online resource for personal growth. Praise the Lord. Lastly, the pandemic shift invites us to depend on God and to pray to depend on God and to pray. Over the last couple of months, we have learned that the only reliable shock absorber in uncertain times is God Almighty. And we are learning to be humble. We are learning to trust God. We are learning to be humble, and we are learning to trust God. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. I don't know whether you think about what has happened to many businesses over the last couple of months. One of the things, one of the businesses that stands out are people who borrowed money to build schools. People who borrowed money to build schools. Probably in their offices they have a feasibility study, a business feasibility study of how workable this idea was. And some technocrat drafted and crafted this feasible feasibility study. In that book, probably there are tables revealing year one, you will have paid off this, year two, by year 13, you will have paid up everything. And everything came tumbling down. God is teaching the God-fearer that the only way to move forward is to be humble and to trust me. To be humble and to trust me. Which implies that we need two things here, brothers and sisters. Number one, we need resources to connect with God as individuals. We need resources to connect with God as individuals. In fact, at the height of the pandemic, even church buildings were closed. And so that young woman, that young man, who depended on the man of God to lay hands on them for their next move, that wouldn't work. If you didn't have resources in you to wait on God, to listen to God, to find encouragement from God in your quiet time, in your devotional times, 
then I don't know how you have survived. No wonder some people are not even coming back to church. Maybe they lost their faith altogether. Because we, are, we had been so accustomed to depending on the woman of God, on the man of God. Friends, the pandemic teaches us that I need to have spiritual resources to survive on my own. You need to have spiritual resources to survive on your own. But also that I need to learn not to boast about tomorrow, but to live with a posture of surrender and yieldedness to the will of God. <clears throat> with a posture of surrender and yieldedness to the will of God. Joshua chapter 5, verse 12, again. And the manna ceased that day after they ate of the produce of the land. And there was no longer manna for the people of Israel, but they ate of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. So much as this free supply is not coming, but God has not abandoned them. God will bless the work of their hands. God will prosper the planting of their gardens. God will bless their land that it will yield a harvest. And uh, the scripture there says, they ate of the fruit of the land. God will ensure that they are feeding, that none of them will starve to death. May God help us learn the lessons we must learn. May God save us from this thinking that how I wish things went back to what they were in 2017, because they might not never go back there. But even with the change in times and seasons, God is with us. God is giving us lessons to learn. And God will carry us into the future. Let us What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting Said, Lord, we thank you for inviting us in this place. We thank you for the things we learn from your dealings with your people in the Holy Scriptures. We thank you that you raised the people of Israel 
as an example to us what a relationship with you, Lord God Almighty, looks like. And we thank you for the revelation and inspiration we draw from every incident as your people journeyed with you in different seasons of their lives. Lord, as we think about the pandemic and what changes we may be invited to make, we ask you to help us. We ask you to help us. Please, Lord, help us. Thank you. I'm going to invite you to pray for yourself in two particular areas. We have touched many, but these two, I think you need to respond at a personal level in prayer. Number one, what are the gifts God has given you? What are the gifts God has given you? In this quiet time of prayer, think about the things God has resourced you to know and do. Think about each one of them. And maybe after this community worship, you want to write them down in your notebook, in your journal. What are the gifts God has given you? The second area of prayer, reflection and engagement is what contribution can you make to the family? How can you help? How can you help? God is calling us from being mere dependents and recipients to making a contribution. How can you help? And so, blessed Holy Spirit, I humbly ask that you'll work with each one of us to be the best we can be in the times. To use the resources you've given us to be of impact, to make a difference in our inner circle, but also for our own personal growth and development. Thank you, Lord, for your word. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.